Everyone, it's Ross, and today I just got my order in from Ison's Nursery. These are muscadine grapes, and we're gonna be planting them today. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Some things you may wanna concern yourself with. There's another plant right there. Uh, we're also gonna talk about just some general overview about grape vines and some things that I think are a bit important when deciding whether or not to grow grapes in your backyard. Um, I will say that these are muscadine grapes, and muscadine grapes are a grape that's native to North America and usually are found in the southern half of the United States, and uh, they're a bit difficult to grow here in Pennsylvania. But I have found two varieties actually that can survive and have been reported to survive negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. What I want to show you guys down here is not technically a grape, but this is a plant called a gooseberry. And these gooseberries are really popular in Europe. And this guy is actually quite small. Um, we pruned him back and also he got hit with the tree that fell over here. But these guys are really actually quite productive. They're a bit thorny. You can see these huge thorns here. Um, there's also many crosses with these guys, but essentially this gooseberry, to me, is very reminiscent of a grape. Um, your typical grape that you guys would see in the store. That is a European table grape and very different than the gooseberry in terms of how it grows. Um, the gooseberry is more of a bush, whereas these European vines are, again, they're vines and they grow uh, in, the, in a way that needs a trellis. And you have to wire them up here. We need to straighten out this trellis. We've actually talked about these grape vines quite recently in a video where this trellis just needs to be straightened up a little bit. And that's kind of how we're growing them. There's many ways to grow them, but essentially the more typical way is you get yourself a nice little trunk here. You train that up to this wire and then you let it have uh, two arms or two cordons that goes out a certain number of feet of your liking. And then from here, these are now your permanent arms and you prune back to these arms every year. It's really simple. You can do this you know, in many different ways, but this is the way I think is really easy. But essentially these vines here, these are the typical European table grape that we see in the stores. It's also a similar species to the grapes that winemakers use to make wine. Um, these are really prone to disease in my area because it has we have lots of humidity, lots of disease pressure here. They don't really do well here. Grape vines are really meant to be grown in Mediterranean dry climates with really well draining soil. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get the soil a bit well draining at least amend the soil in some way. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But the last species here I want to mention is the muscadine grape. And again, this is hardy, these two varieties. I have Lane and I have Triumph that have been reported to survive negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. The coldest we'll get here on a freak winter is probably about negative six. So that's really, really good. And if that's true, these varieties will be here for a long time. It's very exciting because these particular vines, unlike the European vines, um, these guys are really disease resistant. Almost nothing bothers them. They're really easy to grow. It's just really that cold that gets them. So if I can get over the cold, I can get myself a really disease carefree grapevine and uh, have no problems. Also the fruit tastes quite a bit different, has probably more of a wild grape flavor to it. Um, what I want to mention though, and why I've mentioned the gooseberry, why I've mentioned the European grape is that they all are very similar to each other in terms of the fruit. The gooseberry ripens sometime here in about July and then the European grapes ripen here sometime around August, maybe September depending on the variety. And then you've got the muscadine, which, which ripens sometime in you know, September, October. It's a fall grape. And that, what that means to me is that as a backyard grower, I've got successive ripening. I've got crops that will essentially, I can have a grape all season. 
which I think is really cool and something you really ought to pay attention to. So I'm not just recommending growing muscadines. I'm not just recommending growing European grapes. I'm recommending growing all three of these to really supplement if you're a big fan of grapes. You know, that's what I would suggest. So let's get on to the, the plants themselves. And because these things are grown in the Mediterranean, even though these are muscadines, which are not grown in the Mediterranean, but I want to mimic them similar in that way. I think it's better to just have a better well-draining soil. Ray finds really love that. Grapes in historic times really love to be dry farmed. You don't really want to overwater them. You don't want to have too much moisture in your, in your um, environment. All that moisture is really going to lower that bricks in the fruit. So it's important that when we're planting these guys out, we want to make sure that we've got ourselves a nice well-draining soil. I'm going to put you guys down. This was an old bed. And this old bed, by the way, we had been growing lettuces here. So we've amended the soil over time. We've put in lots of compost over here. The soil is not perfect. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but it's better than nothing. And I don't really have to go to crazy lengths. What I want to do here in my climate is I want to plant this a bit higher. I want to plant this a bit above grade. It's going to really help with that drainage that I was talking about. I know you guys can't really see probably too well, but we're just filling in the hole. We didn't really dig a crazy hole. We didn't go to crazy lengths. You could add some amendments, but I want to add all the amendments on the top layer of the soil. That's where I think it's going to really make the biggest difference. And again, we're trying to just raise this up above grade. And you can see some of the roots now are above grade, which is not what we want, but we can always come back in here and adjust this and add in more soil to cover these roots, which I will do at the end of this video. So that this guy is pretty much planted. Now, what we want to do from here is that we want to take our pruning shears because with all grapevines, all vines, you're going to want to train them, right? And this particular vine, believe it or not, has one of these trunks over here that's actually super long. Look how long this is. I can't believe it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this, that particular long vine, and I'm gonna get rid of the rest. Now, why am I doing this? Well, it's pretty simple because if you look back at my other grapevines and the way we've trained them, is we trained one single stem, one single vine up to this wire. We attached it to the wire, and then once it got to the wire, we said, okay, now you can grow sideways, and we've attached that growth then to the wire sideways. And it's formed that permanent structure. So we wanna do the same exact thing. And usually when you plant these things, especially for the first time, this thing should not already be above the wire. That's pretty unheard of. Uh, these are really vigorous plants, I would imagine. So what I'm thinking here is that we're going to prune this back even further. And I think this is just a good idea in general is that whether it's an apple tree, whether it's any kind of bare rooted plant, but you know, a plum, whatever it is, when you get that thing from the nursery, they mail that to your house. You want to cut it back. It's just a better practice. Yeah, the plant's not going to be as big, but in the long run, it's going to work out to your favor. I promise you. So what we're going to do is we're actually kind of going to cut it back. Probably I may even just let it because it's already hitting that top wire, which is incredible. I may only take out, you know, this, this top growth up here. And essentially what I'll do is I can even, if I wanted, I even have the beginnings here of a cordon system and I can tie this to the to the right and then tie this one here on the left that my pruning shears are pointing to I can tie that one to the left so we can already have our, our form pretty much ready to go but what's gonna happen I would imagine is that this thing's gonna try to fruit it's not the strongest plant in the world we really probably should let it grow for this entire year 
Don't let it do anything crazy. Give it a chance to form a really deep, strong root system here and get ourselves a nice structure for next year and get ourselves the production then. So that is essentially the video, guys. We could talk a little bit more about this, I'm sure, but I think a lot of you guys get the point. So yeah, that's my suggestion with the grapes. If you're, willing, if you're doing this in a backyard setting, don't just grow the grapes that are actually ridiculously difficult to grow. Um, you know, you're going to have to spray the European grapes. You're going to have to do something with them. Unless you live in that perfect climate. Get yourself some gooseberry. Get yourself some muscadine. And these guys are pretty much problem free. Alright, take care everybody.